Welcome to Winston-Salem State University's Biomedical Research Infrastructure Center, a center of excellence that is dedicated to basic biomedical and translation research to promote the understanding and prevention of human diseases, including the heart disease, cancer, drug addiction, neurological disorders, and nociception. In the next few minutes, we will show you what we do at the center on a daily basis. In an attempt to study the uh, many protein that is released in type 2 diabetes, we uh, have this rodent to run on a treadmill and have the light shone on them in order for them to produce the heat shock protein. This heat shock protein will later on be analyzed and study the mechanism of the production of this uh, particular protein. What we do here is to study the cardiovascular responses to many of the test drugs that we use. By doing so, we implant the radio telemetry device in some of the rodents to be able to calculate or to collect the cardiovascular responses 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. We implant a device as small as this in the abdominal cavity as it is shown in the recorded version of the surgery. These animals here have been implanted, a radio telemetry device, and the uh, signal is being transmitted wirelessly to the computer that is uh, dedicated for it here. That is, it collects both the uh, uh, blood pressure and the, and the blood flow. These can be changed in response to our test uh, drugs. Because blood pressure can be read as the stiffness in the compliance of the vessel, we therefore isolate the vessel, the blood vessel, to study the ability of this vessel to contract or relax in response to certain drugs. Here, we have we, we will isolate the blood vessels wherever uh, area of the system that we want to we can isolate the uh, renal vessel, the mesenteric vessel, and any of these other great vessels to be able to study the ability for them to contract in response to certain drugs. In many of our studies here, we always look at both at the whole animal level and at the cellular level. At the cellular level, whatever the tissue of interest is, such as the heart, uh, the nerves, uh, and the kidney, we isolate these uh, organs and then we will dissociate them. Here is where we use the dissociation uh, method. We can dissociate any kind of neuron, any kind of uh, nerve cell and then study, study it in, in vitro. Uh, then there is an incubator here where, where we uh, uh, grow our cells and then we also try to uh, uh, keep this place very clean because it must be aseptic uh, at all times. And then of course we use, uh, so we, uh, use this microscope which is a recent microscope to be able to identify some of the cells of interest. So what we do here is to collect the sample and measure the DNA with this nanodrop. This is nanodrop in which we, uh, we, we use to quantify some of the, the DNA that is being collected from the this, from this sample. So the experiment that we are doing in here is to detect the presence of specific pain receptors in sensory neurons. So the way we are detecting is using um, reagents called antibodies. So what I'm doing here, I'm washing the neurons with the buffer, and then adding specific receptor-specific antibodies that after the completion of the experiment, we will be able to detect whether the neurons are expressing the pain receptors or not, if they did, 
whether there's an increased or decreased expression in the receptor proteins, and that we can actually visually quantify using fluorescence microscope. So this is going to incubate for some time, and then we will come back and then finish the procedure. This is a drug addiction lab where scientists are developing or synthesizing uh, an analog of cocaine. At this point, they have uh, been able to synthesize four different compounds uh, because of the lack of name to give it, uh, it is fitting to give it uh, a name uh, called WSSU1, WSSU2, WSSU3, and WSSU4. At this point, the scientists have discovered that WSSU2 is promising to serve as an analog for cocaine. As you know, this analog does have the effect of cocaine, but does not have the abuse uh, potential. Um, so one of the main interest in this research project is to understand the role of calcium in pathophysiology, whether it's hypertension or pain. Um, you saw downstairs isolation of primary neurons from lab animals, culture, and you also saw how we detect particular pain receptors in neurons using specific techniques. So we bring some of those neurons upstairs here and this instrument allows us to measure in real time what is happening to calcium inside these neurons under control conditions or from samples that are you know from taken from animals or patients with painful conditions. So what we do is we put the cells on the microscope stage here that are loaded with specific fluorescent dyes that function as a reporter of calcium inside the cell. So if there is change in calcium, we should see change in fluorescence. And that is detected by the camera attached to the microscope. And that is fed into the computer in real time. And you can see here, if there is a change in calcium, you will see change in the fluorescence in a one or all of the cells. And we can actually quantify that change by putting what you call region of interest and you can actually create a graph like this, time versus fluorescence, and that tells you what is happening to calcium. If there is an increase, you should see increase in fluorescence and you can actually quantify. And we can also test um, the potential drug candidates, molecules, whether they will affect um, calcium change in um, individual neurons or um, group of neurons. So this is a very powerful technique to study the function of these specific receptors that we are interested in and also test potential drug candidates.